Hello everyone, we are Team Krypton from the Brainery Co. For this year, RoboCop 2022 Junior Rescue Line Under-19 category. From the left, there will be me, Joshua, the team leader. Down the line will be Wenyu, Kaden, and lastly, Satak. These are the contents that I'll be covering today. Firstly, on the plans for this competition. Secondly, it will be on our robot design. Following that, we'll be explaining the different strategies we use to overcome the competition challenges. Lastly, we'll show some of the setbacks we had and how we solved them. These are the things we want to achieve during this competition preparation. Learn more about the basic and advanced robotics techniques used in EV3 Mindstorm. We'll use this learning to help our skills and attitudes for analysis and operation of robots and to address the growing demand for learning science, technology, engineering, and math in schools. We also aim to learn how to apply this to benefit others and help aid, aid humans in things that are beyond our capabilities. It pushes us to solve complicated logical issues and will help us enhance our problem-solving abilities. Furthermore, it provides us with the best atmosphere in which to learn how to deal with errors. First up, we built an EV3 model tracker for testing, and we learned new programs for the competition. Array sensing programming was a new line following program we learned, and of that we must find ways to attach three car sensor and the best height for it to go through speed bumps and ramps. We will be using the EV3 LEGO Mindstorms educational set with its EV3 LEGO Mindstorms software for this RoboCop. Now I'll pass my time over to Kaden. He'll be explaining the design of our robot. Explaining our robot design. Firstly, I'll be explaining all the mechanics design of the robot. Firstly, two EV3 large motors and tracks are used for the main movement of the robot. Reason being large motor has strong torque power, tracks with the mini growth, growth have larger surface area which give more grip and friction on surfaces. Secondly, two EV3 medium motors are used for the evacuation zone attachment. The attachment will be lowered down by two single bevel gears that is attached to the medium motor. Lastly, the roof mechanism will be used to house the victims that got picked up by the attachment. When the robot reverses towards the rescue zone, the extended part of the roof mechanism will be pressed down against the wall of the rescue zone to release the victims. Of the robot, we use three EV3 color sensors for lining following. They are placed close together in an array and towards the center of the robot. This allows our robot to better center itself on the line. An ultrasonic sensor is placed facing the front of the robot to sense for walls and obstacles. Ultrasonic sensor is chosen because of the measuring unit it uses, it uses is centimeters. It will be easier for us to fine tune the distance we wanted it to sense. A fourth color sensor is placed facing the front of the robot to find our rescue zone in the evacuation zone. An EV3 multiplexer is used to overcome the issue with inefficient ports for the number of sensors required. Now I will pass over to Won Yi and Shatak to explain the strategy we will be using to overcome the play field. Hello everyone, I'm Won Yi and I will explain how our array line tracing works, how we track the green squares, and Shaktak will explain how we clear speed bumps, ramps, object detection, and evacuation zone. Firstly, in order to navigate around the playfield, our robot uses array line following, with three color sensors arranged in an array format to trace the line. Secondly, the use of ultrasonic sensor will help the robot to detect and navigate around the obstacle. Lastly, for the green squares, we use the track green program that our instructor taught to tell the robot where to navigate when the individual sensors sense the green squares. The above chart shows the different corrective movements that the robot will make when individual sensors sense the line black in color or the background white in color. The above video shows an example how our robot line traces the play field. The above chart shows the different corrective movements that the robot will make when individual sensors sense the green squares. The above video shows an example 
how our robot line detects the green squares on the play field and carry on with the required corrective movement. The above picture shows how the check green program looks like. Now, I will pass over to Sata to further explain the other strategy. Hello everyone, I'm Sata. I will explain how our robot overcomes ramps and speed bumps. To overcome the speed bumps and ramps, we use tracks instead of regular wheels for the extra traction they provided. We also remove the middle gear so that the middle of the tracks could bend into the edges of the ramp so that it provided better traction when climbing. The above video shows how our robot gets to the speed bumps of the play field. Obstacle avoidance we use an ultrasonic sensor to ensure that the robot senses the object, whether it's clear or opaque. Whenever the ultrasonic sensor set detects an object, it will interrupt the line following program and start the object detection program. The robot will go around the object without hitting it and then continue the line following program. As for the evacuation zone, the EV3 color sensors and the ultrasonic sensors are used to send the silver tape and for the distance of the wall to ensure that we have entered the evacuation zone. When our robot enters the evacuation zone, it will start searching for the black triangle, also known as the rescue zone, to drop the rescue kit. Once the rescue kit has been deposited, our robot will start sweeping and sweeping around the evacuation zone to rescue the dead and alive victims after finding out the black triangle. Our video shows how our robot runs in the evacuation zone. Now, I will hand over the presentation back to Joshua. Hi, I'm back again. During this competition training period, we did have many setbacks. One of them would be where our robot would skip the line, set sharp angle corners due to insufficient steering. Next would be the color sensors would hit the start of the speed bumps if they were not mounted high enough, and it would not be able to sense the line if we fix them too high either. For solutions, we found the middle ground. Where we, can, where we increase the steering without affecting the robot to catch the right lines to line trace. Next, we moved out the car sensors to the best height at the same time. We adjusted the track so they could catch the speed bounce before hitting the sensors. When we first started, we were very excited to embark on this challenging but rewarding journey. When we first met each other, we didn't know much about each other. Throughout the competition, we forged close ties with one another, and our friendship deepened. We faced many challenges. However, we persevered and tried to adapt to the situation and improve. Thank you for your time and listening to our presentations.